Hello everybody and welcome back to this new video. Today we're going to be talking about the Windows Sandbox from CyberSec Labs, of course. And the difficulty is 3 out of 10. And let's jump into this. So first of all we do an Nmap scan and we notice that we have an RPC port open. This is a protocol for Windows machines to talk with each other. We then have SMB open on these two ports. Uh, then we have RDP, Remote Desktop Protocol open. We have this port open, which is a WS man, which is a port that Evil WinRM uses. And then we have a couple of more high ports. Now the first and most important thing is probably SMB. So that's what we're going to enumerate first. So one thing to check with SMB is to see if you can log in without any credential credentials on an account. So let's see. So um, we're going to specify the domain name here, which is Sam, which we found here from uh, an nmap scan that it ran on the RDP port. It's a domain name Sam. So then we specify a user and this can be anything, an at and an IP. So if we run that and just enter for password and we can see we're logged in currently and if we do shares maybe we can use the backup share and we can. And this contains a file system it seems so let's see if we can mount that locally. So we're going to do oh, mount dash i sifs dash o is going to be username equals anything comma password equals nothing. Then we're going to specify the IP to the share. Uh, the share we want to mount. And then the local location to where we want to mount that share. So that's that, it's set bad usage. Um, uh, maybe we're already mounted. So backups. Okay, seems like we were already mounted from before, but this command uh, would work normally. So now we can uh, get another shell here and go to there. So slash mount slash backups. We can take a look here and we notice well this looks a lot like a file system and we seem to have a write per read permissions on everything as well as the windows folder so let's see if we can go into that windows folder and we also have read permissions on everything so i think we have read permissions on every folder here and now if you have read permissions on a whole uh, Windows uh, on the whole file system of Windows we can try to find credentials in this. Now Windows uses a SAM file to uh, to store credentials so uh, we can we can take a look at uh, at that as well in our hack tricks if we go to let's search for SAM and then under let's see if I can find it here under credential storage. Can we copy that link? No, okay, we'll just go to it like that. Uh, so Sam is Security Accounts Manager, and that pretty much manages all the local uh, security accounts. And the, the location where that file is stored is in system32 config. So if we do an ls here, you can see here we have the Sam file. Now with that SEM file, if we do secrets dump from impacket, we can uh, get all of the hashes out of there. Uh, so if we do dash help here, it's going to show us uh, the command, which is a, it looks incredibly daunting and, and hard, but pretty much all you have to supply is the system file, which contains information about the system and then the SEM file. And then uh, you can get the you can extract all of the hashes. So let's uh, copy those files over here. So quickly get this. We're gonna copy from here slash sam locally, and then also slash system. And the system file is pretty big, so it might take a second to copy over here. But after that, we are going to run. We can maybe do that uh, in, an, in another shell here type the command already. So we're going to do a secrets dump dash sam for the sam file dash system for the system file and then we're going to say local uh, normally this is where you would put an IP but we're going to do it locally. Has that finished copying? It has. So let's run this and we notice hey we get a couple of hashes. 
uh, one for administrator. So this is the name, this is the RID, this is the NT hash, and this is the NTLM hash. Now let's see, we have a hash for the user Jamie. Maybe we can just log in with his hash. So we're gonna do, we can close this window and we can do here evil dash winrm. And then we can say dash i for the IP address, 31.1.18. The user is gonna be Jamie, and then we can supply it an NTLM hash. And if Jamie has a login with NTLM enabled, then we can log us in. Of course, you could also try this for the administrator account, but in this case, the administrator account can't log in with a hash. So let's see if we can get a shell here. Uh, which, okay, we got a shell. Perfect, so then you would start enumerating, right? So now we're, we're Jamie, you would do your usual enumeration, uh, oh, run maybe power up, run win piece, and eventually you would uh, you would come to a halt and, and you would uh, maybe do a who am I slash priv, to see if there's any privileges, uh, and you would also run the services command. That should be a part of your methodology. And then once when you run that command, you will notice that there's these two services here, monitor one and monitor two, in this directory at the at the web root. And we looked at the web root earlier in our SMB share. So let's take a look at that there. Let's uh, cd to the web root. And we notice that, hey, this is not the SMB share. The SMB share seems to be here in backups. So if we do an ls of, uh, of backups, We'll notice, oh, this is what we had previously in SMB. But now we have this new directory, services here. Let's see if we can ls services. We notice, okay, there's a monitor.exe, uh, monitor1.exe and monitor2.exe. And these services, as shown up here from the services command, they run with privileges. Now, when you have a service that that's running, there's a couple things you can check. Now, and for that, I like to use hack tricks as well, because it can show you what to do. So first of all, can we modify this service? So for that, uh, we could check if we could modify these by doing, for example, sc config and pick a service and then say binary path equals uh, something and see if that works. That uh, doesn't seem to work. Maybe we need to execute this as command instead of um, instead of PowerShell. So let's see. Oh, I missed a quote there. Can I have my shell back? Yes. And then put a single quote here. Okay, we see access is denied. So okay, we can't modify this service. Can we modify the other service? No, we can't either. Then we can check can we modify the binary that is executed by that service? So it's talking about this monitor 1.exe and this monitor 2.exe binaries. Because if we were able to modify them, then we could switch them around. And since this run and end, if we had start and stop permissions on the service, then we could um, change this binary out for our vulnerable binary that's gonna maybe connect to our server again and, and start a service with privileges, allowing us to escalate. So we need to first check, uh, can we modify the binaries? So for that, we will uh, do an IC ACLS of services and then slash um, monitor one.exe. An IC ACLS stands for integrity control access control list, uh, which pretty much is going to show the permissions that users have. For example, uh, the users group has full control permissions full control over this exe and we are a uh, so if i do an who am i uh, who am i dash all it's going to show us that we're part of the users group and the users group has full control over this exe so we can modify this exe perfect but can we start the service for that we're going to have to do another sc command so we're gonna check all our permissions here. So we're gonna do uh, SC, and then we can do, um, let's see here, SD show, I think, and then monitor one. 
We're not going to show us the permissions, but this is in a, a very, very terrible format that's really hard to understand. Luckily, I found this article on uh, how to uh, set permissions for a Windows service that says, okay, so um, the first part here uh, we can we can ignore. This A at the beginning means that it's gonna that these permissions here are allowed, and this last part is gonna say uh, who they apply to. So first of all, who they apply to? If you WD there, WD is everyone. So these permissions apply to everyone. BA and SY, BA means built-in administrators, and SY means local system. So these permissions apply to us because we're not in those groups. And to understand these permissions, you can go up here. So we have uh, service start is RP, service stop is WP. So let's see. So there's CC, LC, SW, RP, and WP. So we can start and stop this service, which is perfect. Um, so then, uh, we also haven't really checked if this service actually uses the binary, or have we? Oh no, here above it set. Okay, it actually uses that binary. Okay, perfect. So now let's create our vulnerable binary that we will upload. So for that, we're going to use the usual uh, Metasploit framework, Venom. Specify the payload, which is going to be a simple Windows shell reverse underscore TCP. So that's just going to be a reverse TCP shell. We then specify a L host, which is going to be my IP address, and then L port, which is going to be, uh, I'm going to pick 1234. Then we say what kind of file do we want, we want an exe, and we'll put that into monitor.exe. So in the meanwhile, we can already go to the services directory here, and do an ls, we see, okay, monitor1.exe is here. Uh, I call this monitor.exe, I want to call this um, monitor1.exe. Okay, so now we can upload that file. So upload monitor1.exe, which is going to override this file, and we can check that from the length of that file. So this one is 73,000 bytes of size. Uh, Let's do an ls here, and we see, okay, that's the same amount, so we've overwritten this file. So now if we do, uh, we can start our listener here, so netcat l uh, listen, n, no reverse host lookup, uh, v for verbose, np for the port, which is going to be 1234. And then here we can say, we have to do a command again, and an sc service start monitor 1. So now it's going to start the service and we get our shell back and we are currently anti-authority system. Now just quickly to show, if we were to, for example, remove this verbose here, if we then get our, get our shell back, it, um, it doesn't show us this uh, line where we get a connection. And for, in this case, it's not a big deal because the shell itself is going to show some information, but sometimes it doesn't and it just gives you a shell without you knowing it and, and you're stuck thinking, oh, why didn't my shell return? So that's why I always add the V parameter. The N parameter in this case isn't needed, but I, it's, it's, I've kind of gotten used to uh, having that one there. So that's why I use that one. Um, so this was my video write-up of the SAM box. I think this was a very, very, very good box. It was definitely a bit harder than the other beginner boxes, but it's a, it's a great one to have under your belt and to understand. If you have any questions, as always, leave them below in the comments, and I will see you back for another video. Take care.